Moving right along, we have Nicholas Feinberg. Back after many years, you were here in the first year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got the shirt. Buddies. Hey, I'm wearing my 2016 shirt too. Wonderful. No. All right. And uh, yeah, take it away. Talking about Learn TV. Very excited. All right. So today I'm going to tell some stories about some of the goofiest things mentioned in the Dungeon Crawl Learn TV. I'll explain what that is in a moment. The goal is for this to be funny to people who are new to crawl and comfortably nostalgic to old hands. So if either of those sound good to you, here we go. So Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup is an open source roguelike in which players quest through a sprawling monster-filled dungeon for the legendary Orb of Zoft. That's it in the middle, right there. So close. Tragically, Google Slides does not yet support Orb Retrieval by web. And here are some excerpts from the Dungeon Crawl Learn DB, a player-run repository of info about, or at least tangentially related to the game. There are well over 10,000 entries. There's drama, there's vanity entries, there's procedurally generated obscenities. Let's get started somewhere. So one of the largest entries in the LearnDB is the list of bad ideas. Players have compiled a carefully, lovingly hand-curated set of thousands of other player suggestions for the game, all of which they dislike. A few of the more comprehensible suggestions. If the player character doesn't eat fruits often enough, they should get scurvy. When vampire char characters are in bat form, they should have to navigate via echolocation. Allow the player to write a mystical ward on the floor to prevent monsters from attacking. Something elvish, the suggestion adds. Crawl has been around for a while. It's inevitable, perhaps, that a few of those thousands of bad ideas would eventually make it into the game. So, of course, there's also a learn DB entry for those. Implemented bad ideas. A cat race that gets nine lives. Obviously, that's a very silly idea, which is why Crawl added it 10 years ago. A jester class that starts with the Book of Party Tricks. And mentally, this one was only included as an April Fool's joke, but it definitely made it into the game. A graphical tile interface so players don't need to read to play Crawl. Well, that's just, that's just absurd. So Dungeon Crawl has gone through many hands over the years of its history, and it's changed a lot over that time. There's a real history to the game at this point, and LearnTB preserves that. So for example, you can look at the LearnTB entry for the Wraith monster and see how it talks about how in ancient times, that is in versions of Dungeon Crawl from about seven years ago, the Wraith would drain the player's experience. The entry for the Ancus describes it as, a, it as a weapon existing in Crawl in a time before time. That's about 10 years ago, give or take. Play, people talk about the game as if it was an artifact from Roman times. And it amazes me. So let's zoom in on one particular antiquity. So Aringia's Surprising Bouquet, a spell that turns items into flowers, was very shamelessly stolen from Terry Pratchett's books. But this is a game about fighting monsters and getting treasure. Why would you want flowers? If you're asking that, you're not the only one. Learn to be users were similarly mystified. But with diligent research, people found the answer. The spell could turn junk items into food for herbivorous player races. Was that actually useful? Well, there's a reason the spell was removed. But what a world where people are doing crawlkeology, research into the past of a game about dragons and elves. Over the years, one thing that roguelike devs run into again and again is misunderstandings of probability. Improbable events will sometimes happen. Sometimes you'll miss five attacks in a row. Sometimes rare and valuable gold dragon armor will show up on the third floor of the dungeon, and then it'll show up again in the next game. Players will say, this is broken. And you'll have to say, well, maybe, but probably it's not. Maybe Xom God of Chaos is messing with your rolls. It's as good an explanation as any. So here's a great example. My summoned ice beasts aren't doing any damage anymore, a player complains. And the developer responds, sorry, pal, sometimes you roll low. Stuff happens. It's just very unlikely that the game would be broken in this subtle way. But, of course, sometimes unlikely events do happen. Sometimes there really is a bug affecting every single elemental monster in the game, an especially subtle bug because the game printed damage messages for elemental attacks while not actually doing any damage. The Ice Beast freezes the yak, except that it wasn't really. And sometimes the devs take nearly a full year longer to notice the bug than one particularly attentive player did. 
But while we're on the subject of bugs, let's talk about slimes. One of Dungeon Crawl's fiercest foes is the Royal Jelly, the quivering lord of the slime pits. If you watched yesterday's talk, he might look a bit familiar. Battling it is dangerous, but if you win, the treasure vaults open up, giving access to the vast riches within. But let's say the player magically polymorphs the Royal Jelly into something else. Let's say a dragon. Uh, that shouldn't lock them out of the treasure, right? So the game checks to see if something with a name ending in shaped royal jelly, like dragon-shaped royal jelly or bat-shaped royal jelly, is killed. And if so, that unlocks the treasure vault too. But what if a player renames themselves shaped royal jelly, dies, leaves a ghost, and then kills their own ghost in a later game? These days, LearnDB reports that Crawl does have code to not open the slime treasure vaults in that case, and I wish I had been a fly on the wall for the conversation that made the devs put that code in. On the subject of special cases, let's talk about plurals. So traditional roguelikes are text-heavy games, since so much of the narrative is communicated via the message log. The orc hits you, three demons appear. To print those messages correctly, the game needs to know not just how to describe individual monsters, but how to talk about groups. Sometimes it's simple, one goblin, two goblins. But other monsters require special rules, one elf, two elves. If it ends with F, the plural is V-E-S, not S. And then you have hippogriff, and the plural is hippogryphs? Per LearnDB, it actually was pluralized as hippogryphs in old versions of Dungeon Crawl. But now it should be hippogriffs, so we go back to an S ending if the original name ends in not one but two Fs, and we really hope that we never add goblin chiefs, because then we're going all the way back to the drawing board. It goes on and on and on in this vein. Catoblepe, Simulacra, Cherubi, Mushaptu, Tsitsime, and a piece. There are hundreds of lines of code, dozens of special cases, just for correctly pluralizing dungeon crawl monster names. If you never want to think about Nawaddle grammar, dungeon crawl development may not be for you. So I'd like to end this talk on the entry for Boris, which really perfectly encapsulates the LearnDB. The first entry is a per slightly dated, but generally accurate description of Boris, the powerful lich who just keeps coming back. The second entry, on the other hand, Iron Bolt, Bolt of Draining, Crystal Spear. It's enthusiastic, it's over the top, and it's wrong. Boris does not have those spells. You, you can look at the first entry if you want to check. This, the second entry is many years old, but it's not out of date. It's never been right, but it is having an absolute blast. And if there's anything that the LearnDB and that Crawl in general should be about, it's that. Uh, do we have time for questions? Uh, we have a little bit of, of bonus time, so we can probably take like one question. Let's okay. see if people have added it. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see a LearnDB question, someone quick. Throw a question out. Go, go fast. Ask a question. Mm. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, I, I really <laughs> love that. Uh, it's actually Kawa got me into DCSS this, this uh, year, and part of that was showing me LearnDB, and I was uh, so amazed by it, particularly those kind of second entries. Uh, question, what's your favorite entry in LearnDB? Oh, that one's easy. It is the GAM guide, the uh, Ghoul Arcane Marksman guide. Uh, which offers just a, it's just a perfect guide because everything in it is completely wrong. Uh, uh, is the LearnDB or the wiki more accurate? Oh, that's controversial. Uh, I would say uh, generally LearnDB, uh, but I have to because that's that's the like tribe I'm in and in the, in the like the, the two battling clans of I the see, wiki versus I see. the. Yeah, didn't mean to, yeah, involve the drama. Uh, how do you get into the LearnDB as a funny meme quote? Oh, I mean, that's. If you say something funny and someone is on IRC, they can add you. Mm -hmm. Someday we really need to add support, some way to add support to Discord editing of LearnDB. Yeah. Uh, the move away from IRC is really hurting it. Uh, can you not just store the plural with the creature name? Uh, you could, but there's hundreds of creature names. And the same code also handles pluralization of item names. Uh, it's There's a lot going on. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. I think that we'll we'll move on just so that we don't end up with too much extra time or or you know. But thank you so much. Fantastic talk. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah.